This is the Ballarat East deposit from the Victorian gold fields. Now I just want to compare this. These are just the desurveyed points, the gold data. I just want to compare this to Wilson et al's figure 14, 2020 paper. And um, you can see this, this same trend is uh, represented here. These are the grades, but these grades are interpolated. You can see all the bubbles that are forming around the high grades. Now, in my opinion, the real trends in this grade uh, are hidden by the interpolation routine. So I would highly recommend you not to interpolate the data. Just use raw data. This is a uh, long section of that view. So uh, let's take a look at that. I've just rotated that, just looking down the continuity. Uh, it's almost the planned view. It's uh, plunging at 73 degrees. It's not the con the planar continuity is not vertical. It's it's dipping at about 73 degrees. So a longitudinal view looking towards the west looks like this. So you can see that um, there are variation in the plunges of the fold, as you can see in the diagram here in Wilson et al's figure. In longitudinal view, you can see the variation in the plunge uh, values. So here it's, uh, it's plunging towards the right, which is the north, and here it's plunging towards the south. This is uh, plunging towards the south slightly, perhaps, and uh, here is horizontal. But overall, it's about horizontal and looking towards 0, 0, 008, this is what it looks like. Overall, it's a linear pod. Okay, so in this longitudinal view, here I'm going to take a cross section through here and um, examine the plunge of the system using LVAs. Uh, it should be plunging towards the north slightly. So that's the cross section. And we'll orientate it so that we are looking towards the north. So that's it. Uh, I don't have the traces of the bedding in here, but you have a diagram in the, uh, the paper. And this is the overall gold mineralization in this section. And the westerly dipping shears or faults are running this way. So these are the traces of the LVA S's and L's, and I'll just select it just in this section, section so we can actually sort of see the trends in this particular section. So this is just the foliations, the gold foliations at that section, and you can see that the plunge is towards the north at about seven degrees. I'll just turn on the linear data. This is the linear data and clearly it is plunging towards the north and the overall foliation is dipping towards the west which is pretty much parallel to the westerly dipping faults that transect this deposit. Okay, next we'll plot up all of the data and it should be basically horizontal. That's what I've shown in the figures. Okay, this is the gold foliation data using LVA. And uh, as you can see, it is basically horizontal uh, plunge to 008 or 188 here. So that is axis one. So the axis one is basically the fold trend. Uh, that is the, the symmetry axis that is defined by the already developed folds and the faults that transact the fold system. And this is the lineation data. I'll just resize the points. 
I forgot to mention that these points are colored according to the gold grade. So you can see that the, the highest gold grades are concentrated along the horizontal axis, which is parallel to the average fold plunge. Angular density of the uh, gold lineation data looks like this. And for the gold foliation, it looks like this. So it's not quite, it's not as steep as the vertical axial plane of the folds. Uh, clearly, it is highly influenced by the westerly dipping faults that produce the leather jacket deposits. So we've defined the long axis of the deposit, and that's axis one, parallel to, subparallel to the fold hinges, and you can clearly see it. But there are breaks in the system. Uh, some of them can be dis explained by displacement, like for example here and here. But in other locations, right, for example here, there is a boundary here, but the mineralization is completely contrasting with the high grade right here so this is this is fairly low grade as well so there are jumps that are uh, produced in the mineralization and these are what we call Perkins discontinuities and these have been digitized by the mine geologists so these are called cross courses and I can show them so what I've done is to basically I've only shown, uh, I've just converted these to disks and you can clearly see them. And you can plot them up in staring at, and this is what they look like. So these are all the names of the cross courses that have been digitized. And we can see that the symmetry axis here is very steep. Uh, that's the intersection line, basically, of all these surfaces and that plunges 83 to 233. So this is axis two. We'll just look down towards this axis. So that's the orientation of the intersection line. Uh, axis two, looking towards 84 to 234. Since the orientation of axis two is nothing like axis one, we know that the mineralization had to occur after the formation of these fractures. Earlier I mentioned the effect of RBF interpolation on grade data. I, I do not use that. I, I use raw data. I'd just like to add a cautionary note about that issue with the Fortis Forsterville deposit that is uh, published by Volga et al. 2020. This is figure six from their paper. You can clearly see that that certain sections are high grade, but then other panels, like right in here, are clearly low grade. And you can say the same thing about here. Most likely there are cross courses, or Perkins discontinuities, that are controlling the positions of these grades. There's probably another one right through here. There could be another one right through here. It's hard to say. But uh, what I'm saying here is that this is best to be analyzed using the raw grades rather than interpolated grade. Uh, otherwise, you can't clearly see what is happening with the grade distribution.